All right. So video four, I hope that you've gotten a lot out of these. I, um, my intention is to really set you up for a lot of success. Excuse the shaking there. And I want to just touch on a couple things with you about the last two personal power zones. So the last two personal power zones are where we start interacting with the world around us, where it's no longer all about you, but it becomes about the bigger picture. And this can get a little bit scary. This is where um, it's natural to fall into old programming and old ways of thinking and being. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to share with you a little bit about um, your purpose and something that's really important to know about it. And we're just going to leave it at that. And then we're going to go a little bit deeper into relationship. And we're going to go into um, a way that I've found that gives us a lot more freedom and ends like the people pleasing or the trying to not get into trouble and, and that, that kind of stuff. So here it is. So the fifth personal power zone is your purpose. And one thing people think of about their purpose is that their purpose is how they make money. And I just want to nip that lie in the bud. Your, um, your purpose is not necessarily how you make money. It might be part of how you make money, how you make your living. However, it's not necessarily how you make how you make your living. The next thing is it may be so natural, so easy for you, so second nature that you um, you literally cannot you can't you don't even know that you're doing it. It's like, oh, it's just just so easy. It's just part of me. That's just who I am. It's just, it's so easy that you almost feel guilty that that's your purpose. That really is your purpose. Um, people recognize you for it. It's part of your natural traits and tendencies. It's not something that you have to go and, and research and study and everything for. It's natural to you. So a doctor whose purpose is to be a doctor has a fascination, a love for it. It's natural. They were a healer when they were a little kid. Um, they wanted to dissect things and look at things and things that are a technician, the same thing. They took everything apart. Um, so notice what you did naturally when you were a kid before the gunk got messed up, right? What were you interested in? What did you like? How can you lean into that? This is also going to raise your vibration because it's going to help you lean into what you really enjoy in life and start really doing what you enjoy. And I was going to give that tip in the last video, but then I was like, no, we're just going to leave it where it is because this is a really big, a, a big, um, challenge, right? Doing that for 30 days. And I'm going to talk about raising your vibration by doing things that you really enjoy that are around your purpose. The biggest key into stepping into your purpose that I found for anybody, the biggest needle mover is to think about what you enjoyed doing as a kid and doing it, whether it's painting or not. Now, you might still have a day job. You might not turn into a major painter, but by painting, what you're going to do is really increase your life force, and then all of a sudden you get a raise at work, or somebody buys your painting, right, and you start a new career. I and mean, things like this happen all of the time. For me, speaking is, this is it. I've always been a performer. I've always been a speaker. I've always been a communicator. This is something that I would do always. I, I wanted to be out. I wanted to be on stage. So for me, doing talks, doing speaking comes so naturally for me. I thought, oh, it's kind of selfish of me to want to be on stage and want to shine like that. But no, not really. I had to find my topic and, and something that lifts me up and lightens me up. But this is really my place. And so you'll find your own place and it comes really easy to you and you really will enjoy it. And that's your purpose. And it may or may not be how you earn money. So there you go. Now let's move on to relationship. Now in relationships, it doesn't matter who you are, that we play many roles in life. So that's where we're going to go. And I'm not going to talk about how you're in a relationship or how to have the best relationship. 
there's many different layers to relationships. There is, um, you know, sexual relationships, there's friendship relationships, there's boss employee relationships, there's employee, um, boss employee relationships this way and this way, right? There is, um, friendships, there's parental relationships, there's family dynamics. I mean, there's so many different relationships that we have. To cover it all in 10 minutes isn't gonna happen. So what we're gonna talk about is the roles. And here's the little lesson that I want you to do. I want you to take your journal, and hopefully you've been using it a lot through this process, and you're just gonna write down the roles that you play. So mother or father, if you have kids, right? Daughter or sister or um, boss or employee or um, you know, volunteer, um, CEO, uh, soccer mom, um, <laughs> right? Wife, husband, whatever, whatever roles that you play. I want you to write down the roles that you play. This is huge. And then once you write down all the roles that you play, I want you to just take a moment and write down who you are in those roles. So the three or four things that you are, you know, maybe disciplinarian, organizer, um, you know, cook, whatever you are, lover in those, in those roles. And if you aren't pretty much the same person in each role, if you're jumping from one thing to the next, what that means is you're a people pleaser. This is very common, especially if you had to navigate and survive in your early childhood. This is really common because you don't want to get in trouble. You don't want to get abused again. So what do we do? We learn how to read people really well. Our emotional intelligence goes really high. And then we navigate the scene for better or for worse. This actually perpetuates the problem. So if you find out that you are kind of doing or looking at it like, who am I as a wife? Well, I'm this because he likes it. I'm that because he likes it. Who am I as a mother? I'm that because I should. I'm this because I should. I'm this way because, oh, well, that's expected of me of the church, right? If you have these things, all of these shoulds, and you're shitting all over yourself in each one of your roles, then I invite you to quit shitting all over yourself and pick right back to the purpose kind of we're going to circle the common traits in each of the roles that overlap four or five common traits that overlap that you have that just kind of follow you effortlessly write those in the column beside so if you have all of your roles here right they're written here these are your roles and then here you have a couple traits so actually do like a roll here couple traits roll there couple traits and then on this side if you break it into three on this side over here you're gonna write the traits that are common and that come really really easy to you and that you feel really really good about sharing so if one of the traits is like I'm an angry bitch excuse my language, <laughs> on the whole thing, right? And like, oh, I'm angry, I'm angry. Like, hmm, well, that might come easy to you, but that's one that you want to have jump up the scale. So if you're angry, you can be equally as happy, right? So you work at improving that into something that's really beneficial so you're affecting the other the way that you want to, which is in a positive light. Um, however, like if, if you have your responsible, in all of these, or organized comes up a lot, or your kind comes up a lot. Um, whatever traits that you have in this role, um, you want to put it over here. And the top five that come easy that you feel really, really good about, you're gonna put here. And you're gonna rip this piece off and you're gonna take it with you. And whenever you're in a situation where you just feel overwhelmed and stressed out because you're people pleasing and jumping through hoops and doing things for everybody, you're gonna stop, pull out your list and say, okay, where am I compromising myself? How can I step back into my power and just be me? Because truly your purpose in life is to be 
you. And you being you is really, really easy. It's effortless. It's fun. And that's it. So I have another gift for you. It is at actually my website. It is AnticaAlicia.com. And we go into really managing your time and, and effectively getting more things done. It's more of a predictable productivity thing. But what I found is with um, high achievers and survivors, we are really, really good at doing things for everybody and everything and getting a lot done and being successful at it, staying busy, partly to avoid facing everything. The other part is just because it's a habit. Even after we're done facing everything, it becomes a habit. And so I have some really fun tips and tools to help you get out of that habit at AnticaAlicia.com. So jump on over there, check out their freebies there, more support. And um, if you know that this personal empowerment is something that is for you and you want to move forward, we have a wonderful program, a membership program at YourOwnUniversity.com. It's $14.95, so it's less than three lattes a month. And um, Every day you get a piece of love and inspiration around one of your personal power zones, an email form really short to remind you to practice the self-love and self-care and gives you an idea to do it so you don't have to think it all up yourself. It's a beautiful community of support there as well for you. And you get coached by um, coaches from all over the world. So that's a really affordable way for you to step into your power, invest in yourself in a minimal way and say yes. Now when you are there and you're really committed to your personal growth, we have um, some other great options for you too. If you know that you're like totally in, you want to find a coach and the thing that's standing in between you and having a coach and really making this personable, personal and hiring somebody because it's, you know, it's average a thousand to 2000, sometimes $5,000 to really hire a great coach to ask you the right questions, to see beyond your own walls and limitations and step into the next level of joy and happiness and success that's waiting for you beyond this, right? To end the cycle of abuse and then even go beyond that to really, really be um, living in the reality that you desire. So if you want to do that and you know, and, and you have a little bit of saved up, like you're ready to invest what you have, but you don't have like the whole chunk of money and you would like to apply for a scholarship. That's what we do here at Divinely You. We have beautiful souls that, um, pay it forward. We have ongoing events and concerts to raise this awareness. Hopefully you donated to that already. And um, then we hand out scholarships to people that qualify that want to hire qualified coaches. We have a team of qualified coaches for you to look through as well at Divinely You. But if you already have a coach in mind, we're, we're here to really support you and, and help you break through one of the most common barriers and that's not enough money, right? So you can create that means for yourself, step into this higher level of confidence and say yes. So if you'd like to do that, there's a scholarship form here as well. Thank you so much. Those three links, three options below my site for more information, freebies, and some great stuff. There is um, the right here below me is your own university and the membership site. Sign up there. Great way to invest in yourself and continue this habit of self-love. And then right here beside us is an amazing um, opportunity for you to take this to the next level and get your own personal development coach to make it personal, get real, and uh, help you move beyond this in an even more powerful way. And we're here to support you do that. Love you so much. Thank you for being a part of this community. I hope to see you at one of our live events. And if you would like to host an event or be a volunteer, be a part of it, let me know. Just reply to these emails. Talk to you soon. Bye.